Please, you've replaced Steve and Marie already. Hey, that's not very funny. Listen, we're still working hard, and we will track down Diva Marie, and we will save her from that psychopath that kidnapped her. Anyways, what's with Minnie making her LJV debut? Well, since Frankie Monet carries a cute little puppy around, I figured I'd do the exact same thing in honor of her figure review today. But Frankie Monet was released seven months ago. Yeah, well, a lot's changed in the two years since I pre-ordered this figure, hasn't it, Comair Alexa? But either way, I'm a big fan of Taya or Frankie, whatever you want to call her, and I'm excited for today's review. And Minnie here, she my little puppy today. Is she my little puppy? Is she my little puppy puppy? Isn't she a little old to be considered a puppy? Well, Comair Alexa, she was a puppy when I first pre-ordered this figure, now wasn't she? Oh, please. It wasn't that long. You know things were shut down, and it took longer than expected to get the figure made. But it isn't their fault. This is embarrassing. Hey, my baby. Mm, you my baby. Wee. Woo. Oh, woo. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm dog sitting 24-7. Welcome to Lumberjillville. Women's Wrestling lives here. And welcome to today's long-awaited review of Legends of Lucha Libre Fanatico Series 1 Taya Valkyrie by Boss Fight Studios. So it's almost been two years since I pre-ordered this figure, and I'm so happy to finally have it in hand. I'm a huge fan of Taya, and I've been really excited for this figure ever since they showed images of it. So yeah, I'm really excited to review this. And not only are we going to open this up and review it piece by piece, but we're also going to do a scale comparison and see how it sizes up to WWE Mattel figures and also AEW Jazzwares figures. Because I know scale has been a big concern and issue for people out there with this line, so... We'll see for ourselves how it sizes up. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a closer look at the packaging first. So starting off with this packaging, I'm going to be honest with you, when I opened up my shipping box here and took these out, I was blown away by this packaging. I, I think it looks amazing and unique all in its own way. It's got its own style to it, and I absolutely love it. And what's really cool about this packaging is this cardboard is sturdy. This is a thick cardboard, so if you're an MOC collector, rejoice, because this should hold up pretty well over time. I mean, it's a nice thick cardboard. It's not flimsy like we've been seeing with a lot of the WWE figures as of late, so that's definitely a nice addition. We have the Legends Lucha Libre logo at the top. We have the Fanaticos wave up there. We have a nice image of Taya in that orange gear. Then we have a nice open window with Taya there with her name. We have, once again, the Legends Lucha Libre logo. We have the Boss Fight logo down there. And turning it around, we have an image of the figure there. Now, this is definitely like the prototype stage because the face looks nothing like the actual figure. I mean, the figure's face looks better than this image, but still... Um, Either way, that's kind of cool that they had a blown up picture of the wrestler there on the back. And then we have her stats on the side. So it does say that she is 5'7". I mean, I've been looking up her height when I do my scale comparison later with WWE and AEW figures. And everywhere I saw, she was 5'8". So here they list her as 5'7". So we'll, we'll go off of that, even though I wonder if they undersized her there and listed her as 5'7 because they know they made the figure too small. I mean, it sounds crazy, but who knows. But either way, we'll keep that in mind. We'll, we'll pretend that she's 5'8". And when we do a little scale comparison, we'll see. And then there's the rest of the line there of the Fanatico C Series 1. Very cool. Now, let's open it up and see how easy or hard it is. And I do have an extra one to keep MOC, so that makes it a lot easier to open it up there. All right, so just a single bubble, and she pops right out. Let's take a closer look. Legends of Lucha Libre Fanatico Series 1 Taya Valkyrie by Boss Fight Studios. This attire is for the March 24th, 2020 edition of Impact Wrestling, where Michael Elgin and Taya Valkyrie with Johnny Bravo defeated Eddie Edwards and world champion Tessa Blanchard. 
All right, some overall first impressions of this figure now that I have it out of the packaging is, wow, I'm actually pretty blown away. Now we are going to break this figure down piece by piece, part by part, and take a closer look at all aspects and also do that scale comparison. But I just wanted to give my first impressions because this is definitely better than I expected. And no disrespect at all, but, you know, this Fanatico's line is kind of Boss Fight Studios' version of a basic line. So less articulation, lower cost point, and all of that. So I didn't know what to expect, but I definitely didn't expect this much attention to detail. And what we got here is pretty freaking awesome. So I'm really excited to take a closer look. So let's do that, and let's start with that face and hair. All right, so taking a look at this face scan, face sculpt, and hair sculpt, Wow, I mean, they, they really knocked it out of the park with this one, in my opinion. So, looking at this face scan, it does look to be a similar technology used as the TrueFX face scan technology, which is like the ink print technology, pretty much. But here, it is really hard to tell when I'm looking up close because it's printed on pretty darn good. It doesn't look blotchy or splotchy, which is a lot of people's complaint with that TrueFX face scan technology. But whatever technology they used here, it looks tremendous. It definitely looks good, even to the point where those eyelashes are printed on perfectly. Now, it is important to note, I'm, I'm interested to see if anyone has a tie out there where the scan's printed on a little off because that is a concern and that is something that happens with the Jazz Wars figures, with the WWE figures, and especially with the females having the smaller facial structures when it's printed on a little bit off, it looks wonky. But I'm happy to say that both of my tie's had the scan printed on great and in return it looks pretty darn amazing. So beyond that awesome face, if you look at this hair sculpt, I mean how awesome is this? This hair sculpt is truly unique and so perfect. I love it. It's awesome. Even to the point where on the side of her head, it does simulate that shave the side of her head there. It even has a little um, off tan color paint to simulate that shave. And that's really cool. Uh, my only thing, I wouldn't even call it a gripe, but my only thing is I wish the hair color wasn't just a solid yellow. You know, I wish there were some different colored roots in there or something to that extent. But that's definitely something that even WWE and AEW in their main lines haven't figured out how to fix or correct or make look more realistic. So I do wish that figure had that um, here. But either way, it definitely gets a pass because they did a pretty tremendous job here in all honesty. Alright, so moving on now to the attire and the body sculpt itself, and just like that head, I'm blown away. The amount of attention to detail to the attire, to the body sculpt, to make it as unique and as spot on to Taya herself is mind-blowing in my opinion. Because remember, this is supposedly the basic style figure, but I don't get those vibes at all. If you look at WWE Mattel Basics, a lot of those parts, 95% of them are reused time after time. And it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but here there's so much unique sculpting, unique parts used to make this as real to life and as close to Taya as they could. And yeah, it, it's, it's pretty tremendous here. So taking a closer look, there's obviously a lot of little sculpting going on in that attire. So in her upper body here, the straps and the top itself is a sculpted molded on piece. And even this design on the front has a elevated texture. So that's definitely molded on there too. Moving to the back, even the design on the back once again has a molded sculpted elevated pattern there. And then going down to her legs, the openings here are... Um, they actually do feel like openings, and it's not just painted on. There's a molded edge that goes around that really does make it look like it's open in the attire. I mean, it's kind of mind-blowing. And yes, that flesh color does match the upper body. A lot of times with Mattel, when we see them do something like that, where they have an opening in the lower body, it doesn't match up to the rest of the skin tone, right? We see that a lot, especially in the basic line. So here, that that's pretty tremendous there. And on her wrist here, what we have is we have these little wrist, uh, I guess, sweatbands, you know, I guess you'd call them. But these are a nice little accent here with some molding on there. Um, moving on down to her knee pads. Her knee pads do seem like they are part of the sculpt, which is good because it shouldn't inhibit the range of motion whenever we do articulation next. And then obviously we go down and we have the signature fuzzy kind of kick pads that she wears. And these are sculpted on. They're not an actual fur, obviously, but the sculpted on, uh, pattern that they use looks pretty dang tremendous. It looks great. And then she just has the plain white boots down there. Now, before we do go into articulation, I am going to say that, Putting her on a Mattel WWE ringside stand was a little tough. 
it definitely took a lot of working to get that peg to go into the foothold, but it does work. And I'd actually rather have that than have it be too loose. So she does work on those ringside Mattel stands, but it does take a little work. But yeah, as far as the attire goes, I love the orange. Absolutely think the orange looks tremendous. And more importantly, it's pretty mind boggling how much attention to detail they put with the sculpting, with the molding and so on. And this is something I glossed over here, but let's look at her forearm tattoo and how much attention to detail is in that. Once again, definitely an awesome feature. So with that being said, let's move on to articulation. All right, so now let's see how the articulation is. You know, this is definitely a first of a kind. Fanatico's wave one, first female. So let's see how it stacks up here. Now with the head, she can look right really well. She can look left really well. She can look up okay, but she can look down really good. That's probably the best um, head range of motion that I've seen in a long time with these women's figure reviews. So that's, that's really good range of motion there. She can really look down. So that's cool. Moving to the shoulder. It does seem like it's on a ball joint, but it does have a ratchet type click to it, which is very sturdy, very nice, kind of similar to the AEW figures. But to me, this joint feels a lot more sturdy and it definitely holds rather nicely. The elbow is, let's see, it's just single jointed. So she can flex it about 90 degrees, a little bit more. But once again, that actually feels really sturdy. The wrist can swivel a little bit. And I think it looks like it can also, eh, not really, it can kind of ulnar deviate and radial deviate. So kind of go up and down, but not so much. Now, in the midsection here, we have this upper torso swivel, which works really well, but we don't have the joint at the waist that's pretty common in wrestling figures. We don't have that in this torso itself. That's all we really have as far as movement goes is that kind of swivel in the midsection. The legs are on a ball joint, which you can actually see the ball joint there, and the range of motion is actually really good, really nice. Um, yeah, she can go pretty... Yeah, she can have pretty good range of motion there with the knee she can flex it about 90 degrees a single joint not bad and what's cool about the foot is it looks like it wouldn't have much uh, range of motion or articulation but it actually rocks side to side it can also plantar flex and dorsiflex so it does have pretty good range of motion so once again remember this is a quote-unquote basic style figure and honestly what we get here for range of motion on a basic style figure is pretty superb i mean it, it really does move a lot uh, I do wish I had a little bit more articulation in that midsection area and the torso, but either way, it, the joints feel nice and sturdy, and it actually feels pretty satisfying whenever you're moving the joints because they do feel so sturdy and safe. But now it's on to the main event here, and we do a little scale comparison. All right, so next I wanted to do a little scale comparison here with Taya Valkyrie and AEW Unmatched Series 2, Ty Conti on the left, and on the right we have Elite Series 83, Sasha Banks. Now the first thing I am going to say, I'm going to put a disclaimer and say that scale really hasn't been used properly amongst any of the toy lines right now as far as women's wrestling figures go. WWE and Mattel have been way off with their figures as far as scale goes. Um especially with the basics and the elite lines, like sometimes they have it right and sometimes they're way off. And if you don't believe me, look at Elite Series 74, Natty. If you put that on the shelf next to all your other women's wrestling figures, it looks like a child. It's crazy how undersized it is. So scale hasn't really been used properly, but I do think that online these Fanaticos figures are kind of getting picked apart a little bit as far as scale goes when in all actuality scale hasn't seemed to be an issue with the AEW WWE figures in the collector's mind so why is it getting nitpicked now I don't really understand that um but either way I wanted to show you how it sizes up to these two figures from two different toy brands here two different wrestling companies um so you can kind of see how it looks displayed now the reason I chose Ty Conti and I chose Sasha Banks is because those are two very popular female wrestlers a lot of people have these figures and they do a good job representing the brand. So there we go. Now, Taya Valkyrie on the back of the package is listed at five foot seven. Sasha Banks is listed at five foot five online, and Ty Conti is listed as five foot six. So Ty Conti should be an inch shorter than Taya Valkyrie, and she's not. She's definitely way taller, in my opinion. Now, if we compare Sasha, who should be what? Two inches shorter than Taya Valkyrie. It's pretty close. Not too bad. Not too bad. So it's going to be a per wrestler basis. Because sometimes with the Mattel figures. 
The figures are undersized, sometimes they're too big, and sometimes they're just right. So, honestly, I, I don't think this Taya figure is too undersized. It definitely should be a little taller, in my opinion, because she's not short by any means. And she's definitely a strong woman, has a great physique. And this figure does seem a little small to represent that. But, like I said, in my opinion, I think the scale with these Fanaticos figures are kind of getting nitpicked a little too much because the figures are great and scale really hasn't been used properly with jazz wars or um, mattel recently so i just wanted to give you all kind of a side by side so you can see for yourself how it'll look compared to the aew jazz wars figures in the wwe mattels and here's one last look at legends of lucha libre fanatico series one tie of valkyrie by boss fight studios all right, so this part of the video, I usually give an overall score here. However, in this case, this is the first of its kind. It's the very first line of Fanaticos figures, the first female in that Fanaticos line. So I don't really think it's fair to give it an overall score. There's really nothing to compare it to that's of similar quality. So instead, I'm going to give you my thoughts, my opinions, and whether I think this figure is worth it or not. So the first thing I am going to say is I came into this review... Uh, a little frustrated. You know, I pre-ordered this figure about two years ago. And even on top of that, when it finally came in stock, people had been getting their pre-orders for the last two weeks. And I just got mine today. And that was really frustrating. And I know it sounds very selfish. And looking back, it kind of is. You know, I was happy for other collectors getting theirs. But I like to get my women's wrestling figure reviews out there for all of you. Like, I want to be that guy for women's wrestling figures. And it was hard just sitting there and not getting any notifications. However... I realize that those delays, you can't really blame them because things happen. You know, things happen out of their control. And they were really good with customer service as far as talking, you know, responding to me. Now, the reason I wanted to say that is I did go into this review kind of like, let's see what they got. Let's see, let's see what it is. If there's flaws, I'm going to find them and point them out because I've had to wait two years for this figure. But I'm going to say this. There's, there's no flaws in this figure. There's, there's... Nothing wrong with this figure, in my opinion. Like, nothing major. I mean, this this figure freaking rules, and trust me, y'all. Like, I try to keep things positive, but I was ready to find the negative things about this figure and be like, why didn't they fix that in the two years? Why didn't they make that change? But honestly, this figure shows the tremendous amount of effort and work that they put into this figure in those two years, and I'm blown away. This is truly one of my favorite women's wrestling figures in my collection. And look around, I have almost every women's wrestling figure, and this one definitely stands out. It's amazing. It's tremendous. I can't say enough good about it. And like I said, that should mean a lot because I came into this re review really wanting to find um, any of the negatives that might be a little bad about it. But everything from the packaging to the figure itself is tremendous. And the fact that this is online around the $20 price point, it's so worth that. So much worth that. Elites cost more. You know, basics are a little cheap. But this figure, in my opinion, is more of an elite than it is a basic. I know this Fanatico's line is considered a basic line, but this packaging is quality, and this figure is such good quality. And a lot of these, I don't want to say third-party companies because I guess I guess that's what they are. I don't mean that in any disparaging way. But a lot of these third-party companies that are producing Hasbro-style figures or, you know, even Elite-style figures, their prices are ridiculous. I mean, I got that Bull Nakano Cella for like, what, 35 40 bucks, And that was a waste of 35 or 40 bucks. It was a piece of plastic. That's all we had. Here we have an articulated figure with great detail, uh, good articulation, and spot-on likeness. For $20, y'all, I don't know. I hope it's still available to order right now because I would head on over to BossFightStudioShop.com. Um, I actually think Amazon still has them available, but I'm telling you, if you are watching this video and you haven't ordered this one, don't, don't miss out on it. This figure is amazing. Even if you're not a women's wrestling figure collector, this figure is tremendous. And to think that it's at such a low price point, it, it's pretty remarkable. So I, I could honestly, I could pull up a chair and I could sit next to this figure and I could tell you how amazing it is, but I, I trust that you just take my word for it and go out and get it yourself because this figure is amazing. It rules. I love it. And the last thing I'm going to say is, do I think this figure is going to be a nominee for Women's Wrestling Figure of the Year in Lumberjillville? F. Yeah. 
Thanks for stopping by Lumberjillville. Women's wrestling lives here. For a first look at all future women's wrestling figures, make sure to hit subscribe and become an official resident of LJV today. Also, head on over to ringsidecollectibles.com and use discount code LJV to save 10% on all your women's wrestling figure needs. Now, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you have a great night, y'all.